Okay, so I guess we're going to try to walk through your process for making the arts and the, the mandala-like things that you've been making recently. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make a thing. Um, I guess I can start this by sharing my screen. Great. Those are the right buttons. And hello, I've now got a little Tashin in a box. <laughs> I feel like showing what we made last time would be good, which I think was number seven. No, I haven't made number seven. I just did a bunch of prep work. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, that's it. All 88.9 megs of it. Yeah, let's just quickly download the, the smaller version because then it can open. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, So, yeah, this is what we made last time. And I think that took us about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm just going to run through that from scratch again. And as cool as those images are, the process is even cooler. Like all of the different iterations that you went through and watching it, it's like sort of more dynamic. And uh, I thought that yeah. was really cool. Yeah. And I mentioned last time how I feel like there's, I really want to do, um, try animating some of this. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, the other thing is that they do end up being insanely dense. And mm -hmm. I feel like that. I don't know. There's, there's there's like some way of playing with the content um, that I haven't like stumbled upon yet. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, I'm very happy just mandalaring. Uh, so as last time, I've just made a completely blank uh, square in Illustrator, um, and so yeah, I have Illustrator and I have Photoshop open and ready to go. Um, and and can you say a little bit about what each of those programs are for, broadly? Yeah, sure. So they're both Adobe programs. They're both used for making images. Um, Illustrator is specialized around um, what we call paths or vector graphics. Um, so if you think of a screen as being loads of different pixels and you can draw something in every pixel and that's what makes up what's on your screen. If you would think about a picture like that, that would be um, like a still image. Um, like the kind of stuff that Photoshop works with. Illustrator doesn't actually do it sort of pixel by pixel. Instead, you draw uh, smooth mathematical lines um, and you can then fill them with color and you can put like, you know, shadows around them. You can put um, like gradients. You can, you can build up things that look incredibly rich, rich. But at the core, it's just these abstract lines that you can scale to any size at all. Um, so yeah, Illustrator is specialized for doing that. Photoshop has some tools to do that, but it's a lot more cumbersome. Mm -hmm. Illustrator is designed for doing um, abstract lines with um, with colors and uh, things around that. Photoshop is much broader. It can basically handle anything you throw at it. And its specialty is dealing with sort of like pixel by pixel um, rasterized images. Wow. So you're pretty much immediately get a sense of what like drawing with abstract lines looks like here because I'm going to lay down a few random circles. Um, that is absolutely not a circle. Let's use the ellipse tool, that's, that's always better. Um, so yeah, I start these drawings. Um, let's not use a pattern I've done before. Let's try this, why not? Doo -doo -doo -doo. And so what I am doing is literally just holding down shift as I put down circles. And if you look at this shape that's on the screen, um, you can see it's got a black line around the edge and that's sort of like the color I've chosen. Um, but there's a very thin blue line in there as well. And that's the actual geometric path. And so that's really the only thing which is saved in terms of you need to know it to rebuild the rest of the image. Um, and so these, they're that size, but I could make them literally any size at all, shrink them down, blow them back up again, they're never going to lose their jazz. Um, but instead of what I'm going to do is select them and start to make a little um, proto mandala out of them. So I'm going to repeat that in a mirror and just have a play about and see what looks good. Oh, no, why are you doing that? Oh, 
Hmm. Well, I think that might be quite fun. Okay. So I'm going to get out of that. Now we've got this sort of like composite shape here. Uh, which, let's rotate that round. Yeah. And so what I want to do now with this, get it lined up nicely, and shrink it down so we've got a bit more room to work with. I do want to scale everything. Shrink. And we go object, repeat again. And this time, let's do radial. Mm -hmm. so the radial repeat is just taking that object and sticking it right in the circle. And I can get distracted here because that's just already looking pretty. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to save that now and we can have that in the bag. Export, export as. Right, I'm going to make a new folder. This is going to be. Well, eight. It's going to be a ping. That's great. Seed one. And this lets me basically blow it up to whatever dimensions I like. And I like it to be really detailed when we go in there. So 900 PPI means I get a massive file out of it. So let's just save that and then mess about more. So that adjusts the number of rotations. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. I don't like the way these overlaps happen, but that's quite nice. Yeah, the, the just changing the number of rotations feature is really cool. Yeah. And it's nice then to play about with the scale a bit, because what I can do is, oh yeah, there we go, increase the overall size of the circle we're dealing with, ramp up that again, and yeah. No, I don't actually want to work from that because I think that's basically too much detail to begin with. I want to be able to build things up to a level of insanity. And if it's too insane mm -hmm. at the start, then there's nowhere to go. So simpler mm. shapes as you kind of see images. Yeah. And I break that rule from time to time. Uh -huh. but I I quite like that. I think that's got something to it. Let's just save that one. And pull that seat two. And that's probably enough to get going with. Um, so I do come back to Illustrator um, if I need extra shapes. But the next thing I'm going to do is create a new custom size image. Let's do it at 4000, 4000, and that's a good start. Bam. And I want to go and open. I think it's inside. Yep, because I'm great at nesting things. We've got this inside. <laughs> the it doesn't matter. Let's paste that in. Yeah, so you can see these came out absolutely massive. They're over 4,000 pixels in edge, which is fine. That just gives us freedom to work with. Um, Okay. Oh, you know what I didn't do, Tashin? I didn't add any color to them, mm. uh, which can lead to some pretty cool effects. All right. Um, what am I going to do here? No, I don't want to be normal. I am just having a very quick, distracted play around with what these two look like, laid on top of each other just for fun. Like, that's nice. That could be part of a like short run NFT collection of like weird and dollars. <laughs> But I'm actually going to put in, um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to put in the work this time and just color this. So I'm basically clicking in and going to the original. You can see here, here's the original shape that we started with, these like five circles. So I'm going to quickly go and move our little faces. Uh, open up a color book. Shall we do, what do you reckon? What do you think to pastels? Where's the pastels? There we go. Pastels and neons. And the colors at this stage don't actually really matter. It's just nice having variation because I can... <laughs> okay, fine. All go yellow. Um, it's nice having variation because I can then work with this later as I start to mess around with the colors in the other image, just having a bigger range to start with. Um, so they're, they're just more like tone differences rather than the final colors that you'll end up with. Yeah, like tone differences doesn't quite cover it because tone differences wouldn't give me as much to work with, but sort of like a multi-dimensional just filler. Mm -hmm. 
And let's see, I think let's just put a different color on you. Maybe a nice purple. Here, I'm gonna change radically into a light yellow. No. Okay, great, that'll do. Okay, so here's our weirdly colored one. I'm gonna do the same thing we did. Call and L8, call that C2. We're gonna replace it. Yes, because there is no history. Open it. Yes. So I've taken a bit of a break from making my dollars actually. Not quite intentionally. I've just had a very like slow couple of weeks. So mm -hmm. this is nice to jump back into. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Everyone stop trying to call me at this exact moment. I'm largely antisocial. How is this not something <laughs> I've picked up on? What what inspired you to start making them in the first place? Um. Oh yeah, I wanted to make a. Oh, my brother has a cool um, mechanical arm which you can program and use for drawing things, and I'd had an idea about uh, about two years ago for just a nice little set of three uh, drawings which would um, just play different aspects of like non-dual self or mindfulness practice. And I thought this would be a really nice thing for just whipping out of a, like, you know, tiny little size things, but whipping out of a wallet and putting them down and just having, um, I don't know, a, a like portable little shrine or something like that. Mm. Uh, and they were all just done with simple circle shapes. And so I just wanted to like have a test object that I could like draw on this arm since I was finally at my family's again and it's there. Hmm. Um, so I started making one of these in Illustrator and then got wildly distracted. Um, I ended up just taking a screenshot from Illustrator and pasting it into Photoshop and just playing and seeing what I could uh, get out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and very rapidly, they become things which you don't want to try and draw using an arm um, <laughs> because the arm would just freak out. Uh, <laughs> In, instead, you get some very pretty things in their own regard. And my dream would be doing this in a 3D modeling software. Um, mm. So they've got like depth and then just like moving around them in a VR space. That I think would be the the peak. I mean, wow, that would be peak. really cool for sure. Wow, it would just be so trippy. Uh -huh. uh, like it was like under the floor of the VR meeting room with a sort of like uh, gem reflection. Um, yeah, huh. could do some really lovely things. Uh, can you Can you say a little more about the relation of like the intention of the kind of art you wanted to make and like non-dual meditation practice? So the way I was thinking about my practice at the time was like, ooh, my, my relationship to it is a bit different now. I'd say I have wandered further from the path, but at the time, I was starting to change the language I used internally because it didn't really feel right to say I am having such and such a thought as much as such and such a thought is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way that things connect um, and actually form um, a moment, an identity, an observation uh, seemed to be this delightful sort of emerging from chaos uh, affair. Um, Chaos is actually slightly the wrong term. Like everything has its own order, but like when things come together in a certain way, suddenly there is uh, this extra pattern or beauty. And so I was increasingly thinking of minds, objects, um, delineations of a, of a pattern uh, of awareness as just being these intersecting uh, sets of patterns or geometries from the wider world. And so I think I had a couple, I uh, had three core ones, which seemed really important. Um, one was about uh, how choosing uh, kindness or positivity basically uh, almost like recursively reframes uh, the world and like builds a kind of positive world. Mm. Um, one being about uh, change and how the like, oh. Uh, one being about change and how the um, 
about how the change is extremely radical. Like you, you don't get an end product, which you could, or rather an end state, which you can like trace back to where it came from. But nonetheless, that journey is, um, is a single journey that happened to something. Um, and there's a lot about being brave and uh, trusting that you can sort of remain you while doing this like crazy new thing. Mm-hmm. Um, or at least I used to have this mantra, which was, you know, <laughs> this weird new state would appear or this thing I have to do just straight after having an intense meditation session I'd stop them and be like it's okay like everything that you are everything which you like uh attached to like none of that is under threat you can just trust that it's going to be okay as you come and do this new thing like you can as it were persist through this change um and then there was a third one I can't remember exactly what it was now but all of these sort of lent themselves to progressions of like nice simple geometric shapes mm. Mm. Uh, very cool very cool thanks for sharing a little more about that that's absolutely fine um okay so where we've got to here is i've got a nice group and this is just uh our first two shapes led on top of each other in some interesting ways so i'm going to just save that so i can come back to it no why did you do that i know i did that Let's just copy that, put that down there, select these two, mask that layer, stick this in here, and flatten it down. Um, actually, I'm so sorry. I've just got to see what my... Ah, I think I got a job. Woo! Oh, congratulations. Excellent. Yeah, totally not going to call my recruiter back right now. And if he ever sees this live stream, Roberto, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, the good news isn't going to get any better. Uh, yeah that's nice though that's really nice uh, i've been doing okay. consulting recently and it's been very chill but not quite enough of it to uh, um, do everything i want to do um mm-hmm. all right i'm gonna i'm gonna focus though on on making this thing mm-hmm. um so yeah we've got these we've got our original two layers which is uh this one and this one and this one's been inverted but that's because it gives it cool interaction properties with the layer below and we're just duplicating that and giving it off to one side because I'm going to take this let's throw the canvas size up a bit because that's just restrictive 4,000 pixels where why did I think we could get away with that <laughs> let's take that and if I copy you and move you slightly to one nope move you slightly to one side let's head out there and if you remember last time I tried to do some distortions and Photoshop was just like no nope, that's way too much Mm-hmm. I want I want this bar to go. Stop touching it, Olivia, and it will go. Two, one. Thank you. Da, 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 da. Filter, distort. Yes, I got sphere eyes. Basically, if the canvas size gets too large, which in my images it regularly does, you can no longer sphere eyes. And what sphere eyes is doing is basically taking the entire um, canvas, imagining that you've got a sphere that perfectly fills it, and then distorting based on that you can see the preview here and mm-hmm. i can do negative or i can do positive i think today i'm going to do positive that just looks better bam great that's fun so let's go yeah i think i can afford to take you down i'm not going to worry about making these two insanely large scale while i'm doing this live on a video call it just becomes a bit hectic so if i duplicate you move you around we've got two giant eyes that's always fun wow. and just a little bit spooky um and then let's be really radical nudge them particularly that yeah we fit one more in if i do it like this I'm remembering numbers right Oh yeah, look at that. The central circles there gives a guide. Wow. Um, so I, I don't try, like most of the adjustments I've been doing so far will actually reflect pretty perfectly, but by and large, I do just a lot of this by eye. And so you've got to notice little edge details the whole time, like the fact that those five in the middle have been a nice guide on are we lined up properly. Mm. Uh, okay, so that's reasonably intense. That's quite nice. Now, what scale are we at? 8,000, 8,000? 8, yeah, let's go bigger. Image. <laughs> and the size. I know, I, we only just got here. The 12 seems fine. 
12 seems fine. Um, okay, uh, now what I'm gonna do is group them and I kind of want to do some weird effects with them. Um, I think the first thing I'm going to try is, oh, no, I've got a better idea. Pop you down there, do that. Let's go duplicate, colorize. I want you to be bright. You can't see this because it's the layer behind, but now you'll see there's a white one there. Filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. That's just a very nice, smooth mm -hmm. blur. Make it nice and big. Oh, I'm gonna duplicate that. That's fun. Um, I wonder we might have crossed the threshold if you can no longer use this filter, but let's just try. Damn it! Yeah, I have. How about no, you dead? I want the big one. There we go. Filter. Stored sterilize. Yeah, I got it back. This time I'm going to go minus. That's crazy. Wow. I kind of thought it would have more of the bowl type effect going on, but that's really just giving me some madness. Mm. Um, all right, never shoot a gift uh, horse in the mouth. That's not <laughs> the expression, is it? Um, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna run with it. Uh, okay. You guys can go up there. And then let's paste that. Okay, 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 okay. I want you to come back behind everyone. Back behind everyone? Yes. You can get deleted, otherwise I'm just going to get confused about life, the universe, and everything. You guys can get merged. You, not doing anything. Okay, we've got some things. Stick that there. Mm -hmm. Shall I be lazy? Shall oh, I interesting. So the main difference between this and I think what it will have felt like to watch last time is things have got a lot more complicated in terms of colors a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And that is because I started with all this freaking color going on. So actually what I'm going to do at this stage is already start messing around with what we can do um, i want it to be radial so this is making a um gradient layer i'm going to hide the top one so you can really see what's going on and it's over everything else and mm -hmm. so that's just white expanding in the middle which doesn't look terribly different to what we had in the first place but i'm going to make this pinky mm, i'm not feeling pinks today what colors are you feeling today, Tashin? Hmm. The blues look kind of nice on that palette. Yeah, I'm being drawn. I really don't think that's quite extreme enough. Well, whatever, I can work with it. Okay, so that just does a whole gradient layer. The image has lost some complexity, but. Ooh. Oh, see, I want. I don't want everything to go like that, but that's a really nice feel. Hmm. How can I not make everything a little mad if I do that? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Someone's just hurt your eyes. Okay, let's go back to... Which one was it? Was it Lighten? Someone was very pretty around her passion. I think it was Lighten that you liked. Yeah. I'm now going to go with screen. Okay, so we've got screen. That's fine. I'm going to move this to behind everything, though. Keep that popping out. Duplicate it. And now I want it to only apply to the contents of this layer. So let's just duplicate it, merge it down. I can now get a single version of the layer, which I can get the edge of. Apply it to this shape group, which contains all the bits of that layer. Stick the thing inside. And now I want it to be a bit darker, basically. I think if I start there and then go hue saturation and just move this wheel around a bit. Um, 
yeah <laughs> it's always fun when you start moving the wheel around a little bit <laughs> okay so again i'm not saying you're going to stick with these colors i think you've already seen how the colors change wildly from their original spec mm -hmm. uh, but yeah that'll do just for now and then we had that on top which i'm now kind of feeling isn't adding as much as it could be really as yeah i kind of want to jump back into illustration and make another little shape for that so yeah let's do it i know it's too much to explore hmm. okay so you very lovely uh let's just find your way and Let's do this. Now, it could be crazy, Tashin, and I could use squares. I've never used squares before. Well, that's Let's crazy. <laughs> Madness. Um, sure, you can you can be pink, and you can be pink. Goes with orange. Great. Um, oh, my God. Okay, so that, that is indeed a square. Let's just make the stroke a little more visible. Oh, I, I, this, this we're going to learn some things here. I don't know what the square is going to like and not like doing. Mm. Because what I'm starting to learn is, you know, I'm drawing these basic shapes. I'm like, oh, I think I know how the repeats are going to treat this. I know how this is going to like uh, work with the personalities of circles. But I have no real point of reference for the personalities of squares. So let's just start with that. Object repeat. I'm going to jump straight into radial and just see. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's fun. I should have been using that's really cool. Ages. Um, <laughs> oh, I like how they have this. It looks like a, like a, there's sharp circle things that are like uh, gears in the middle. Mm, oh, yeah, we got that. It's, I feel like it's a tiny bit aggressive, but. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. And so what are we working on here? We're working on that. This is going to be, this is going to get to be an increasingly weird mashup. Um, oh yeah, I didn't point out, like, these don't necessarily always work out, but yeah. Okay, right, let's just explore that. Um, yes. I think it's exporting, you're wanting the other part too? Oh, did that get along for the ride? Yeah. I, I've got so used to just like cutting them out post that yeah okay so I think yeah that kind of coggy thing is great we'll get rid of you briefly file export come back export as four okay I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work on you not to mention the fact that I actually think you should be no <laughs> that's so fun though um. Just the shape. Why do you all want to come along for the ride? Fuck it. Fuck it. We'll do this color. I think that's got a little bit more punch to it anyway. Yeah, I'll do. You can be C4. I can replace that. There we go. Yeah, right. Um, let's open up those files. Three and four. Oh yeah, there's a little baby. Um, okay, well don't worry, you have a life in another file. <laughs> C4, you are done with now. Clean up as you go. <laughs> Dash, where the fuck is this one gonna go? Um, yep, don't need you anymore. And I want you. Uh, while we're out here, let's let's do the legwork. Because I don't like how the symmetry breaks in the radial transform and you, the last one basically sticks on top of everything else. I huh. uh, looked into how to fix this and it's basically complicated. So if I go and, excuse me, I asked there to be two of these. Duplicate, transform, round we go, down to here. And now we don't have a perfect lining up indeed i didn't manage to chop it exactly halfway and this is the kind of thing which i sense someone watching this video is going to really get upset about uh -huh. it's partially me um but 
oh, I know what I can do. This is this is very rude. Um, it's all about the composite effect. Move those two down, delete that on the original, copy and paste it, hide that. Um, this is so evil. <sighs> Where to God, this is like, like, you know, people talk about doing hacky code. Uh huh. This, like, this is hacky, hacky Photoshop. Art. Yeah. Huh. But the, this is the, this is kind of why I, I love doing this, is it really keeps reminding me, like, just stop, just relax, just stop struggling. Like, mm -hmm. stop thinking that you can't do that. Like, stop thinking that it needs to be perfect. Um, see a thing, know how you feel about it, and, uh, and move on. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got these two. We've got these two, we've got them sucking out like that, we've got those coming there. What might be really fun to do, and my only hesitation is I feel like I might have done this already at some point in some of the drawing, is to tile the middle bit down and round in a circle. Um, so for that I want to do canvas size, and let's take the height up to a very conservative 20,000. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, oh, that's cool. So the gradient here has shifted because the middle of this is now about here. So this is the middle of where that radial fill is coming out. But I really like how that's made the gradient more pronounced. So that's fine by me. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do then is... Do I need to get any bits that are in here back again? Oh, I know what we can do. What I can do, so what I want to do is I want to take these, the two circles that are here on the bottom left and get them onto their own layer. And if I think, I think if I can do that, we can have some fun. So let's get a rectangle out. And I think this picks out the one I want from this layer. Yep. And then I want this one here. Pretty sure. Yeah. From this layer. Switch up. Hey. Uh, okay, that's that's one of those. Put a box around it. I've got the right layer sizes. Copy, paste, just a little bit of it. Aha, great. Bring them up to the top. Yeah, that's great. Go merge them down. Can get them back into the can get them back into position. Photoshop, since I used it many, many years ago, has developed a really weird feature where it like when you try and grab a layer and move it, it takes a very strong opinion on mm. what you're actually grabbing. Mm. Um, oh no. That's really annoying. Uh, and when also you copy and paste layers, which is what I'm doing with now, for some reason it moves it a certain amount. And I've never understood why this is the default behavior. Why mm. if you copy and paste the shape, doesn't it put it in the exact same place? Mm. Very but strange. What's, what's even more peculiar is that it is a different amount on each layer. So this has just lined them both back up to where they were. I am now wanting to just extract that. Oh, ain't that cute. Mm. Oh, well, okay. Um, we're going to run with that. Duplicate that again. <laughs> um, I want to merge you, in which case most of that effect should vanish. Let me just get that. I want to select you and say that's the only thing which exists. And then I want to go and select you and say you're the only thing which exists. Okay, stunning progress we're making here. Now I want to. Oh yeah, you you two you two can continue to be happy. Um, I think I might need to flatten them though, just because. Sorry, but yeah, look at that. Now the colors aren't going to shift every time I resize the canvas. Um, everyone stay calm. And hey, look at that. So what I want to do with you is, 
probably start by making you a little bit smaller or something. Um, let's get everyone else nicely tucked away in a group. Yep. What were you? Were you relevant? You know what? I'm going to say I can't remember what's in you. And so, you... oh, yeah, we're going to come back to that. Those are the new shapes we made. Except for the fact that I can see them. We'll sort that all out in a minute. So I've got these two, and I want to turn them into some kind of an interesting arm. So let's duplicate that. Shrink it down a bit. Rotate it around. Duplicate, transform, rotate it around. And I just thought it might help to have like a guide shape while I'm doing this. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's the kind of edge I want to trace. So let's just put this in behind and then I've got something to work against. I know when we spoke last, Tash, and you were talking about wanting to like make some mandala or geometric things yourself. How's, uh, how's that been going? Yeah, I've made a few pieces that are a bit more geometric, I'd say, since we last talked and some abstracts, although I'm doing them in Procreate rather than with vector graphics or Photoshop or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm interested in making diagrams and like uh, network structures and like root structures and that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, I once wanted to learn how to do that using like um, the same tools that they use for making like database or scientific graphs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've still got some interest in that because building a um, my own mind mapping software would involve solving some of those challenges, which is a kind of long running one for me. Okay, and what do you reckon? One more. I'm just going to bring it in a little. Let's look at that outer edge. That outer edge is making like a nice curve. Okay, like that. Why not? I've got weirdly attached to that black oval now, though. I didn't expect that to happen. Mm. Oh, well, I think um, if I got the hang of vector graphics, I could do some really cool stuff with like inserting basic shapes into Procreate. And then um, a, a trick that I use a lot is like I'll lower the opacity of uh, something that I import into Procreate and then like sort of trace over it or draw over it um, or use mm -hmm. it as a reference in some way. And so even if I like I could just sort of design the kind of shape that I wanted in a vector graphics program and then still draw it manually but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no i know what you're saying and um i i feel like you get you get a lot out of that because you're combining the like the geometric side which the computer is very good at with the like texture response which an artist can bring yeah um, <laughs> okay so i've got a wing now and what i want to do to my wing is just a little little bit of shadowing so that you can see each element a little bit more. So I'm going to apply a drop shadow to the individual layer. Let's try and see what's going on. And this is where it slightly works against me that I've made my colors so intense. Let's just, yeah, let's raise that. And let's just stick in as much noise as the image will allow. So it looks very noisy, but it's not actually because if you zoom in, the noise just gets progressively less noisy. Mm. What happens though if I make it a really intense green? Oh yeah, I like that. I like that more. Let's do that. I'm going to copy the layer style. And then I wonder if I can paste it onto a whole bunch of layers. Um, there it is. There it is. Okay, so we've got that going. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But before I do all this, I'm going to see if I can just quickly remove the layer styles. Yes. And this is something which I hope I'm going to be very proud of myself for doing later. It's just keeping a layer which doesn't have that glow on because I want to start moving this around a lot and fiddling with it. And so not having it be a stack of layers is kind of to my very, like, little computer. Mm -hmm. You can see just flattening it is giving it a bit of stress. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I want to do anything like um, applying a border or an edge to it, 
it becomes impossible. It's now got a soft edge. So you just end up with these really crazy janky shapes. Mm. Um, but because I have kept um, a version which is just the just the core thing that's going on, I can use that as a reference if I like. Okay, I got this. Let's see if I move that around to about here. Yes, and I also want to put this below the um, this shape, which I'm just going to bring out. Yeah, there we go. Da, 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 da. Duplicate transform with minus 100. Oh, I ended up with even more of them. Okay, yeah, that's definitely it's definitely started to look like something crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the top is this. Yeah, so what I'm going to do next is take the top section. And in it, we had that background one, and we had that one there. Um, let's take you out. Have this little one. Let's transform you. Now, what I would like to do, sort of have a pattern of it running along the bottom for no reason other than something needs to go in that area. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to do it extremely basically. Have a, have a nice join at the tips. No, that's a horrendous join at the tips. There we go. Hmm. Okay, don't doubt. Do it. Work with it. And now I think go down to about that size. Yep. I feel like I'm making a Christmas wrapper for an alien. Uh -huh. Okay, that makes me reasonably happy. We're going to go here. We're going to buy a little gradient, just a little one, just a little one. And I want it to be. Someone is really mucking with the colors across this. Where is there an unbounded gradient? <laughs> there it is. Caught it. Please, the love of God, not that gradient. Am I in CMYK mode or something? I think I am. That's, I don't want to be in CMYK mode. So the colors are looking a little muted, and I think that's because my image is rendering in the wrong color mode. Hmm. But I can never quite remember color settings. How to change the color view. And I would just say help, but unfortunately I have this little bar up here. Which can I move? Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Fine, I will work with the colors I'm given. But only because I'm feeling nice. Oh. God dash, and they're not the cars I was hoping for. Hmm. Well, maybe it'll be okay. Let's just bring that back and make the cute little gradient like I was initially hoping for. You can go and be a crazy yellow. Maybe that was the issue. Okay, let's take a pause. Let's take a beat. Where have we got to? So I've got this absolutely nutso shape going on here. And it's bringing down two arms to this bottom, where in theory, we could sort of like create a nice underbelly there. 
Mm. Which, if I was going to create a sort of like, like almost like a carapace for a beetle mm -hmm. on that black, I would take this shape. I would move it down to my bottom shapes. Uh, yep, on the black circle. That's yeah, that's good. Uh, move you down here. I'm gonna put you. <laughs> okay, yep. I'm gonna just hide those for the time being. And what I think I want. Ah, I know. Let's transform you. Let's go. And if I hold down command while I transform, I can adjust the edges of this and make it do crazy effects. Yeah. Which I think what I want to do is actually make it look like it's growing. Let's put that there. Should really have made another copy of this before I did it. Don't worry, we can get one. Mm -hmm. Hey. Mm -hmm. Olivia, you want to try and mirror the effect you were going with below, just before. Okay, yeah. That one I think is nice enough for me to just copy and run with like that. Uh -huh. Yep, and let's do one more. Shrink it down a little. Now, I think I'm tripping myself up in all of this. By trying to um, trying to compose everything and get the colors finished early on, and why I think that's a problem is that it takes away your ability to be more weird as you go. Mm -hmm. Just ends up putting you in a odd cycle. So what I want to do is give myself permission to really reconfigure the layout. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do once I've got these nicely squared away. And what I'm doing here is just, well, as you can see, making them more black and white. I am 100% sure that there is a quick way to do this, such as not having made them color in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, there we go. The thing again I like about doing it this way though is each one is ending up with a very slightly different result. And for some reason I'm very attached to that in the making this at the moment. Super. And That's nice. A weird sort of eggy thing going on. Mm. And, ooh, you know what would be absolutely lovely? And if I took all of these, I think this is just going to work. Yeah. Extended them just outside that edge. Yeah, that's nice. No. Um, let's take this last one and just add one more in. So we're completing it. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Thank you very much, Photoshop. Um, is that the whole bottom group? No, there's loads more in the bottom group. So I'm going to group them together, all those ones we just made, duplicate them, transform them. Width is going to be minus 100. Beautiful. I'm going to put that about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, talking about that. 
super, super, super. Is that still symmetrical on the shape above? I'm having a hard time telling. Let's say yes. Let's Looks say yes. that way to me. Uh, yeah, I think so. And I'm getting a sense now of what I want the image to do. This is nice. Uh, we're going to potentially run into the issue that I tried to make this really too large. But I did buy a very fast scratch disk to help me do all of this. So we'll see if it holds up. So we've got those two groups and we've got this uh, black oval. Yes. Let's group them all together. Let's duplicate that. Let's transform it. We're going to flip it by the height. So I can then move it upwards. Uh huh. Yeah, that's getting very weird now. That's what mm -hmm. I like to see. And what I want to do now is bring back those arms we made earlier and I promptly deleted or hid. Yeah, those two. Those are weird. That's definitely weird. What, what, did I th what did I think? There was a space where I wanted them to go. Sort of like ringing around. Let's just, let's just play about with you. What is going to happen if we do a little bit of that? I might lose most of it. I think losing most of it is okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think losing most of it is okay. Let's do that. I'm going to duplicate it, transform it, move it sideways. I'll put it a little further out, a lot further out, apparently. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Amazing. Uh, group those two together. Let's muck around with the layer settings just to see what's going to happen. Now, that's kind of what I was thinking of. And honestly, I don't think that's as fun as what we had at the start. Where did I put that? Set? The first black circle, which I had, I take that out. And we just move the whole thing. Yeah. What are you? I, we still need to go back and find out what you're. Down. Yes. Naturally, naturally. Huh. It's okay, I believe in you. Amazing. Let's crop this again, just so Photoshop can have slightly fewer heart attacks. Great. And I think this little row of things at the bottom now needs something a little more exciting going on. Um, I am going to say that we should do... Ooh! No, it could be quite fun. Oh, I've got an idea. We're going to... Where, where do I even put them? Here they are. I've loved you very much, but... Ooh! Let's just keep you. Let's just use you directly. It's going to be fun. So I'm going to take this as a as a, just a row, and I'm going to want to try and turn it into a um, a thing which is spiky. Now this might lead to a really janky effect, but usually you can salvage them. Okay, sure, why not? We can hmm. bring that. Maybe Make it look light light. for it. Yeah, um, or like um, sunbursts coming out of it. Um, so let's say that works totally fine as a shape. Um, I'm loving how the weird shape at the background is now sort of feeling like a weird little force field pushing down. Hmm. Um, let's do without the gradient for right now. Um, and start working with our new leg. So I could do it this way around. I can do it this way around. And oh, it <laughs> is. Uh, this could be quite a lot of work. Uh, not if you just get started and do it, Olivier. That's a very wise point, Arthur Olivier. <laughs> uh -huh. Because they'll grow pretty quickly. 
Now, this is where I'm glad I've done this fair bit of sketching over the years, because I can see where my perspective lines should be going, which is going to make it a lot easier to um, fit these in in a way that doesn't bump into each other. Oh, I was having such a nice time doing uh, semi, I mentioned 3D is what I'd really like to do this in. Mm -hmm. um, I basically started trying to recreate these patterned on a on a 3D um, uh, like perspective grid, but I don't have 3D modeling software, so I was just doing it in Photoshop, and um, that's when I needed to buy a new hard drive because mm -hmm. it was just going absolutely nuts. Um, Something feels a little strange. I know my spacing's getting tighter together, but for some reason, even spacing wasn't feeling right. So now we're doing sort of descending amounts of space. Uh, I didn't actually ask him to stop transforming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Nobody said this was going to look normal. Nobody said that it was fine. Hello. I don't think I've seen this sort of effect in one of your pieces before. Like a like a three D spatial dimension. They 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 felt more like like where they shift like that. Yeah, I. I've run at it a couple of times and mm. I'll be honest, kind of balked it more than once. And I think that layer ended up becoming very background. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. But I can just quickly show you. Yeah, it's, it's pretty up. I don't expect you to try and export the <laughs> export the things. Just uh just lay off. I think five temple, which has been through a hell of a lot of iterations. Um oh wow. Yeah, you can see in the background the first version of it. This was actually an error which Photoshop threw because it ran into memory trying to do the transformation. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, there's the first floaty level. Um, oh, yeah, and you can see there I've started to turn it into this inner uh, pattern. Hmm. And eventually what I started to come to, which I quite liked, were these ones here. Hmm. Yeah, and that's as far as it got. And then I was a bit like, something's something's feeling off about this. I'm going to like come back to this in a week or two. Hmm. Uh, I don't know how that's going to go, but yeah, that's that's got the that's got the attempt to do it. Mm -hmm. But I, I I like this. This is feeling yeah, it's looking um, good. Uh, what's it making me think of? Aside from any number of hallucinogenics. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to say being like wrapped in a carpet. Um, yeah, which is not something that regularly happens to me in sort of like clandestine ways, but like it's something that happens a lot when you're a little kid. Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 da. So we've got two quite distinct wings going on there with a gap in the middle, and I could go and fill that in with more of the pattern, but as I think you can tell from me saying, but I've got another idea. Um, let's go back to the top. And acknowledge that I haven't really used this layer a whole load. I have to try and create these motifs, so let's do that. And what we're going to do is... Hmm. Okay, my gut is telling me don't try and get to attach to the perspective that we had going on, because... Uh... Trying to obey the perspective really strongly in a freehand tool, which mm -hmm. resists doing a lot of perspective work, um, has so far proved to be reasonably frustrating. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do my own thing every time. And did I manage to I want those two to be lined up? doesn't really look like they are from the lines but i think that's fine i think that's totally fine so we're going to do one of them except i want you to be let's just shift the colors around a little bit i know these aren't final colors but yellow seems to be more the friend of what's going on just above it 
I'm going to do a little drop shadow. I actually take my time and do this nicely. Button, button, drop shadow. And you're actually going to be dark because sometimes, just sometimes, I can get traditional. There, higher distance, slightly other size. Let's take the noise out of this one just for the hell of it. Casty down a bit. Can we actually increase the size again? And let's call that a piece. And then we'll duplicate that layer. Do a little transform. Bring it down a bit. Yes. Um, perspective thing still looks like it's working to me yeah it's but well, and this is kind of what i mean like if i try and chase doing the perspective properly then i'll end up getting lost in technical little corridors and the, the payout isn't worth it if i just trust that i'm trying to make something else that fits in mm -hmm. then it tends to work out and that is more or less the continuous mantra for mm. me of, of working with all this In the drop shadow. So even if I do change all the colors radically, which, as I mentioned, I'm more or less planning to, having them have some coherency to begin with can be just delightful. Um, I want to do a really specific thing, and I have no idea how to do it. Uh, just group them, duplicate them, merge them, uh, make them incredibly bright. And now what I want to do is sort of like pull this into like a spike mm. um which i don't even know if that makes a lot of sense but usually it's in the doing where you discover interesting things so um that's going to be quite nicely uh -huh. Get that again. Now, I'm noticing that I'm really off center in comparison to that first one. So let's see if I can fix that a little bit. Um, this is centered, it doesn't look like it's centered, and that's actually what matters. That looks like it's centered better. Now, who are you? You're that side. You guys are good. You're good. Let's get you inside. <clears throat> you inside you. Will you behave? You inside you. Mm -hmm. Apparently, you're determined to misbehave. There we go. And now that is definitely centered on the dots inside it, more or less. So I think I am totally within my rights to say you should be here. Should really just turn on the bloody grid. Photoshop has a grid for exactly this reason. And then you guys should be more like here. More like there. Mm -hmm. uh, -ba Am I convinced by that? Well, we can play about and find out more. Um, which is the end of all of this. So I just wanted to thank you, but put you behind everything. Uh, this is the part where I suspect some people would say, this is just cheating. You're just copying one button and putting it everywhere else. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care so much. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I see. I don't really want the gradient to be on that bit. Can I select? Yes, that's what we can do. So I basically put a mask, which is like um, 
I best to describe a mask, which is like an, a, a picture that says where you can you can paint the effect. Mm -hmm. So the gradient can only be in the uh, white bits in that tiny little thumbnail you see beside the gradient layer. Um, but when I changed the canvas size, it just added a bunch of white up at the top, which means that it's spilling outside where it should be. Okay, so let's bring that back. That's grand. And we're going to shrink it. So let's take you. Yes, you. Merge you, because apparently I cannot be fair to deal with all of your complexity. Right now. <gasps> no, before I merge it. Quick. Um, oh, who is it anyway? I haven't been naming these very well. Let's take a moment. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping. That's what everyone loves to see on a live YouTube stream with some housekeeping. Uh, I think you're the grid. Yes. Brown grid. Super. For some reason you're above everything else, which I, I think that should change. I think you should be behind things. So let's move you to here. What are you? You're a copy that we no longer need. What are you? You are the bowl. What are you? You are the middle bit. Uh, middle undercarry, under there. Then we have the top, which just contains that. So you guys, oh, what more about you? Maybe you can come back. Um, let's just take you guys, bring you out. I have a feeling that I need a new shape at some point soon. So we've got the top, we've got the bowl, we've got the ground grid, and then we've got the bottom, which is like the um, greeny background. I'm going to regret calling it greeny later when I change all the colors. And then there's that weird tendril. This layer, I have said for ages, I have no idea what it is. Let's actually find out. Um, not apparently that layer. Oh, well, you can go. And you are uh, central bottom point. Okay, now I know where things are a little bit. You can stay anonymous. And you, I'm briefly going to get up above everyone again. Okay, here we are. We've got these crazy white background bits, which I'm going to merge down. I'm going to turn into a gradient because everyone loves a gradient. Hmm. Let's do it that way. I want the gradient to just be a little bit more punchy. Yeah, there we go. Look at that great color. You can totally see where this is going. Uh, yes. Okay. Can I merge you down now? Am I feeling timid? Uh, I'm going to keep one of you around just in case. Merge you. Uh, duplicate you because I'm curious. Are you a better fit than the one we made in the first place? Nah, stick with the one I made in the first place, it's fine. I'll come back in parts with you. Okay, so we've got this. What I want it to be is like just a little bit sort of bigger, smaller even. I basically I want to make a little halo of these going around that top section, and then I think that's gonna be a nice place to then unify all the colors and apply some more gradients. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering whether I should make this bulge at the top a bit smaller because I think I'm gonna struggle to fit them in around it, but I don't particularly want to go and create more space. So any impulses, Tashin? Hmm. Does seem prudent to make it a little smaller. Yeah, but I'm actually not going to do that. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm going to go bump the width up to there. We're going to bump the height up to there. Make this a round number because that's nice. Yeah, so now the perspective is starting to leak out a little, but that's okay. I think it's still looking fine. I'm going to take you, put you there. Yeah, I do have a copy, so I don't need to freak out about preserving you. And we're just going to do a couple of these that are going to emerge from the middle of those upper ones. Pretty obvious that we're reusing that shape, but 
I never ever claimed that I wasn't going to reuse shapes. Mm -hmm. It's funny noticing the like criticism which my inner monologue sort of like lobs at me. Mm -hmm. And just be like, yeah, but that's that's not a rule. And there's two levels. Like I can power through it, or I can deeply accept that a part of me was just giving me a hard time mm -hmm. or trying to be creative. It's like Oh, if I if I reflect on that, you can actually get quite a deep sense of release from being like, nope, I am loved. And yeah, yeah. I, I have sympathy and I'm sure the like self like checking part of me does a huge amount to like keep me safe in ways that I don't know about. But mm. yeah, I'm allowed to have that release. Oh, I know what's coming next, Tash, and this is gonna be fucking weird. Um I wonder whether I should do it in a more complicated shape, but I'm really feeling just doing it in silly boldness. Um, what I want to do is put in a massive fat black arch going over the top of all of this. Mm. Um, so I'm not entirely sure the best way to do it. Um, if I was in an illustrator, I'd know exactly what to do. So maybe I should just do it in illustrator. Okay, that's what we'll do. I'm going to draw the rectangle, which I want the arch to go around. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this, because that is definitely the most sophisticated way of sharing data between apps. I'm going to Illustrator, make a new file. Yep, give me a custom size. Paste that in. Look at that. Lovely. So, like I say, Illustrator can just about handle giving it um rasterized data which is what this is but i can't really do much with this in illustrator apart from deform it um anyway i don't need to do anything with it apart from draw an actual freaking path mm. which is sort of the sort of the nails of um what illustrator does or the bedrock and we haven't really seen it so i mentioned everything is just uh a abstract line drawn between points. Now the circles, it handles that in the background for us. Whereas, whereas now I'm going to draw my own one. And actually, no, I don't want to do that. Let's put one corner here. And then I think the next one's going to go here. Here. And I'm going to it here at the middle. Okay, thank you. I want to flip those two round. I want to make the line I am stroking things in dark. And I really want to go to town on how fat that line is. Uh, let's say 100. Oh, that might be a little fat. Let's say 70. Getting there. I'm just remembering that Illustrator has a nice. Um, tool I could use to handle this. It's called a uh, rounded rectangle. But is that doing roughly what I thought it was going to do? Yeah, sort of. It's always a learning experience. Mm -hmm. um, I just want this point here. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, go up a little bit. Okay. Nope, cancel that. Okay, I could also make it pointy at the top. It might be a bit weird. I mean, not that any of this is particularly normal, but uh, um, is that a shape I'm happy with? It's an even line width. It doesn't quite look like it's an even line width, but it's an even line width. Okay, yeah. I don't want to hang out here too long. I'll get confused. So let's just <laughs> export this glorious shape as a corner. I'm going to actually bump you up to 12 because I think my canvas has gotten stupidly large at this stage. Over here. Gonna open corner. Now the reason I didn't do this here in Photoshop 
in spite of the fact, fudge me, things have gotten really big in here, Tashin. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I was I was thinking that was going to be considerably larger. Uh-huh. Um, okay, you know what, this is fine. Um, the reason being that I think this image is oversized anyway. Like, no one's ever going to use it at this scale. So I am just going to go and have fun enlarging from this size. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm immediately doing something slightly different from what I thought I was going to do, but that's also fine. It's all emergent. Yes, it is. And then let's take that one there, duplicate it, deselect. Uh, you come with me. Yeah, thank you. Do a little bit of that there. Yep, make it a little bigger one, duplicate that, and put it like, put it here, and maybe even, uh, where'd you go? So this, the way I'm extending the ends is a fun little hack I learned a while back. Like you can't transform the whole shape, but if you just take a tiny slice where there's no change in the horizontal, you can then <clears throat> find the right layer. Uh, you can then transform it and stretch it. And this can be really useful for like extending the end of a gradient um, mm. or something like that. But did I just delete that bit? I think I did. Thank you. Uh, extending the end of a gradient or something like that. Um, and what I want to do here, though, is continue to build up this weird network of um, what I can only call pipes. It's going to be very strange. Yes. Oh, I mean, really fun stuff on our calls with these. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll end up moving the pipes to the back? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And then I don't think we're going to see this next one that I do. I said duplicate. Just ignore me. The viewers at home wondering why I am manually editing my history instead of... Uh, <laughs> The normal thing, that is because I turned off my command Z function Photoshop when I was experimenting with animation. The experiment went, well, badly from an objective point of view, but very well from a learning goal uh -huh. point of view. Um, <laughs> well <said. laughs> um, and I've just never turned it back on again. Um, partially because it just it's a bit of a mind um, workout, is having to I really... <laughs> Really could have used Dash in literally any way of making these corner shapes that wasn't going into Illustrator in that incredibly bizarre fashion. But uh, we got here now. Um, so yeah, keep it keeping no command Z, um, but having to just use the, the history tool. I feel like it. It's giving me um, what do you call it? It's giving me uh, less hesitation like i press command z i go back in history a whole lot less now hmm. that it's uh, more costly okay so i don't normally build things up like this but look at that that's a that's a weird old assortment of corners and stuff i think that'll do for a background so i'm going to group them all together and motion down yes yes i definitely want them to be merged down i'm going to duplicate it transform it width minus 100 this old trick Oh, oh, okay, we're going to do this and then we're going to go on a brief uh, side journey to the land of really fucking cool. So I've got all that going on. Uh -huh, I will sort out those bits at the top. Uh -huh. And you know what else this is telling me? Something else isn't in the middle. This picture is insisting on being difficult. I want to select 
I want to create a new image. I want this to be, let's say, 10,000 by 10,000. I want to get my main image popped out. I want to drag this layer onto the new image. Okay, great. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. Let me get you back in. Okay, so now we have this crazy ass background, which I'd like to point out I'm quite happy with. Uh, we're going to put that here. Yes, but I actually want to go behind the greeny background as well. Mm. <laughs> Someone's painting outside their lines. And once again, it's that layer mask. Um, okay, so I want to go and um, basically uh, take from here to the same point on the other side. This is this is weird. What am I actually trying to do here? It's just it's just this inner shape here. I don't want so yeah. We'll take that there. I'm going to go and invert that. I'm going to clear this from the layer mask. Okay, now we have. I've got to be honest. Like one could call this an atrocity very easily. Um, right. Uh huh. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, we've got one on the bottom as well. I don't think we need you anymore at the bottom. <laughs> Duplicate it. Merge it down, get the edge, select, modify, expand my selection. I want it to go out by about 200 pixels. Did that actually listen to? Yeah, look at that. Um, I want to up my mask, invert it. Yep, yep. Tashin, I am not at all sure about the result that we've got here. This is very strange. Okay, let's take that side. Break. I expect it'll look better when it's colorized. Yeah, you're right. Shall we? Um, yeah, let's just see what mopping about with the colors does. And da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think no matter what happens. It's going to need to be gradienty. So let's just go linear. Yeah, I mean this okay. Go from the horizon, go from the horizon up. And And front of that. Let me stick with that for now. Okay. Um, then, hmm. <laughs> see, I was aiming for a very simple border shape, and I ended up making something quite different to a very simple border shape. Um, it does look much better with the color done. You're right. But I'm going to have a quick play about here. How are we doing for time, by the way? Um, I should probably go next, like, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. All right. That sounds reasonable. Um, uh, would help if I'd actually duplicate it. Your so poor Photoshop. What, you mean me uh, flipping yeah. it to only... You no, know, you just put it. it through so much with all of these layers and these <laughs> canvases and all these transforms. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, I think you can see what I'm aiming for here, yeah. though. Um, I don't normally do this radial repeat by hand, so I might end up making some mistakes, but that'll be fine. I, I do sympathize, though, with Photoshop. <laughs> Oh, I didn't really think about how I was going to join you guys. Yeah. 
you know it's absolutely not going to happen these are not going to meet up at the other side <laughs> um, it just needs to be a bigger canvas the answer is always a bigger canvas okay so like <laughs> while that's absolutely true um <laughs> That's not the issue which I was thinking of. The problem I'm thinking is that um, these are not going to form a complete circle. Uh, oh God, that's so horribly out of alignment. Oh, I got to I got to fix that. That offends even me. Um, I'm going to do these together. Then I'm going to correct the alignment. I can get any of them to sit bloody straight. There is no straight anymore. We left that behind a long time ago. Oh, okay, turn on the damn grid. I can't. The bar is in the way. It's fine. This is all fine. I'm glad my face is here because it does betray the fact that I'm having a great time. I'm telling you, when people find out that color commentary is better in art than in sports, no one will be interested in sports anymore. Oh my gosh, artists could make so much money. It's going to be great. Okay, um, you know how you were joking that a bigger canvas size is always better? It's already 20,000 pixels an edge. I'm not going bigger than that. That's just silly. Um, okay, uh, but I am going to go and merge these guys. Yep, you sure about this? Okay, yep, great. Uh, we're going to transform them down. It doesn't need to be that big. Bring it back down to here and then do totally normal things. So Photoshop complaining you. Lucky we're not dealing with 40,000 pixels an edge. Oh, don't make me do it on these joins. I'm so sorry for the lives of those obsessed with detail who I'm <laughs> probably ruining by doing these joins here, but it's really more about the process. What else is Tasha? This is sloppy even for me. Absolutely not gonna stop though. Um, wow. So yes, but I've definitely done something asymmetrical. Okay, I know how to fix this. <laughs> Delete that. Yep. We can go. Merge the two of you down. Maybe not the best idea I've ever had, but we're gonna what? merge you two. Thank you. Um, we're going to delete this bit here. Oh, I've got a good feeling. Ah, oh, that thing is a little bit better. I'm gonna bring you up. I'm gonna duplicate you. I'm gonna transform. I'm gonna go with minus one hundred. Yes. That looks rather fun in the middle. I'm going to bring you across like, you can do the same thing, do the same level of crazy crossover. We'll make it nice and gentle on this center one. Let's make it nice and gentle. I like the open. Nice. Yeah, we'll do that. We're going to merge you down. Then I'm going to pop you out. I'm going to bring this layer back again. Okay. Let's bring you. Mm, nope, we said we were going behind. It's fine. We make a group. I'm going to put the layer mask onto the group so that anything that goes in here can have the same things going on. We'll put you inside. I'm going to get rid of that. Now we're going to go. Dun, dun, dun. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know that I literally just did that and then undid it, but that was a very good reason. Excuse me? No, cancel. I don't well, you never want to do that. What do you reckon? Is that centered? I like how I'm using 
a participant on the other end of the Zoom conversation to be my ruler here, but uh -huh. <laughs> asking the wrong person here, Olivia. Participative measurements. Oh wow. Here we go, in a little bit like this. And I just wonder if this is starting to look a little, a little junky. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe, though, this is exactly the kind of thing we needed. And we're going to do an expanding gradient from the middle. And it's going to be absolutely wonderful. We're going to make it radial. Bam. Yes, we're going to make it bigger. And we're going to make it orange. And then we're going to apply some top level colors and stuff like that. And then I think we're going to call it a day. I don't know if I'm going to quite call this one finished at the end, Tashin. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to have had a lot of fun doing it. Okay, yeah. Now, I kind of think that's a horror show. Mm -hmm. So what I was hoping to get out of that is not really what I got out of it. So let's do this a different way. I'm going to go by bring a bit of this layer. Oh, yes, yes, that's 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 going to work better. Um, yeah, OK, thank you. And this one, though, I want it to be. I want you to be purple. I want you to be a purple that agrees with the other purple that got going on down there. Yes, that's very nice. Thank you very kindly. Shall we reverse it there? No, we shall not. Let me that. Great. Now, we've got this chaotic mess of shapes going on. Um, let's, for the hell of it, put on a... Yeah, one of those. It's got a thousand pixel rounded edge. That's apparently really not very much. <clears throat> Everyone calm down. <laughs> thousand pixels. We're going to make this six thousand pixels. Let's go do that to about that size. Yep, nice normal shape there. I wanted to have no fill though. I just wanted to have a stroke. And I will come back to this, I think, and change it. Mm -hmm. But there's just so much going on at the moment. I'm a little overwhelmed. Hello, Damien. Okay, and let's see what we can do with some color coming together. So freaking weird. Okay, I think I'm going to need to apply a little bit of compositional sanity at some point because this has gotten very, very strange. I kind of want it to apply in the white areas. Whoa, it doesn't right. look that bad. It's murky, oh, what we've got going on. Mm -hmm. um, what I think I'm going to do is leave that uh, darkened, but stick it back here. Mm. Yeah, and then on top of it all, I'm going to go for another gradient. And... Well, pinks has just appeared open in front of me, so I feel a bit bad for ignoring it. Um, pinks are always a good choice. Da, 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 ah. da. Our faith is being rewarded, Olivia. Yeah, I really like the top half of what's going on there, and then the bottom half. Isn't that bad, actually? Yeah. Okay, let's adjust this rectangle that I did, because I think it wants to be 
a little bit. Yes. Yes. Maybe it comes to here and goes underneath some more shapes. Just below the bowl. Okay, yeah. All right, and then let's just go do some really silly stuff and see what else we can pull out of this. Hue saturation, you go away. Let's Hmm. I quite like you. I want to buy a virtue as well. <laughs> it's a little intense. <laughs> it's pretty intense. Um, <laughs> Our faith is being questioned again. <laughs> Okay, I I know what you're gonna say, but I'm just gonna like go one more level down the rabbit hole, oh. and see what we can get away with here. So that brings things back to what I feel like is an okay no, what is an okay place. But I hate the actual colors we've got everywhere. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> I, I suspect this is leading down a little bit of a rabbit warren. Ooh. Nope. Nope. Let's just take them out. Oh. Well, that's trippy, for sure. That's looking very cool. Oh, I don't know which I like more. I think I like the second one, but I really like the yellows down here. So let's just go and get the edge of the bowl. Where that's gone. I see the bowl. The bowl is just apparently it has no edge, so we're going to merge it. Yeah, and then I can go into my thing here and take out just that spot. All right. Uh -huh. Okay, so what happened? Where, where were we before we had those two? Yeah, so that was it before. That was us playing around. And then that's with the additional fuckery going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I really like how those background shapes have now ended up giving a real sense of depth. Yes. I think that the wig cutouts that have come in there, maybe I could fill in, like do yet another layer inside. Um, and I kind of feel like the bowl at the bottom could get copied around and used in some different ways as well to build out the edging. Um, but that is not a bad start for... Uh, how long have we been doing this? Yeah, for slightly under an hour. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased with that. Yeah, it's oh. probably a good stopping point for today, but I, I love that we got to see the, the sort of process of how this works and uh, the experimentation that happens and how things kind of emerge and blend. Yeah. It's been really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice to go through it with you. I feel like it puts me in a very different headspace. Mm. Um, mm. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, well, thanks for taking the time. It's it's fun to learn how to do this. This it, it gives me some interesting ideas for kinds of art I might explore myself. And yeah, fun to share that with the world as well. So thank you, Olivier. Well, what I'd love to do is one of these where it's basically flipped. And so like you're you're driving, uh, but you can call out uh -huh. to me for like any just like advice or instructions on how to like move in a particular direction between these like applications. Um, like that could be a really fun uh, session at some point. Mm, that could be really cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to, I need to get something to do vector graphics with for sure uh, and give it a try. I haven't actually tried yet, so mostly just been watching you, but yeah, it'd be mm. worth trying. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks, well, thank you so much for the time. And yeah, I will chat to you soon, Tashin. Okay, take care, friend. Bye. Bye.